Hi everyone. Today we'll be talking about is Grizzy Hendrix right? Is Royce to five nine a scammer? My name is Holden Stefan Roy, and while I don't drink tea, I will be spilling some coffee with y'all today. I don't know. I learned what spilling tea was because of that whole like fiasco with Shane Dawson. Like I think a lot of people, and we all realize that spilling tea is really just. Commentary, but at a much grander scale. So they're the cooler version than we are as commentary peoples. Um, here's what happened. I'm sitting there on uh, Facebook. My dude sends me this uh, Stan 2020 Dear Royce to Five Nine music video from Grizzy Hendrix, and asked me my thoughts on whether or not Royce to Five Nine was a scammer and just my opinion on the general situation. And I might have spent 20 minutes blabbering away at him as I formulated my thoughts and i said to myself why not research this subject to make a video so that's what's going on here subscribe to the channel if you like it typically we do album reviews uh like the video if you feel it because yo it would help it would let me know this is a good direction to take things and before we get into it this topic that we're going to address which it involves paid promotion as a musician and i'm a rapper i did drop a new song earlier uh this month i think no september 30th whatever it's on this channel it's called lose weight i got an album coming this month so when we talk about promoting projects it's like a super relevant thing to my life and um I don't know. I wanted to. I'm also looking how I can get back to my community and how to build up artists. Because while I watched uh, Grizzy Hendrix's um, video series that he has done promoting his new song, it's almost like a two to three week campaign. Truly brilliant. This guy's marketing campaign going at Royce like this. Well, here I am making this video. So it was effective. I watched that song. I would have never watched that song if it wasn't for the scam accusation questions, right? Like it's good marketing on Grizzly's part. Um, anyway, also, if I happen to say T Grizzly, uh, I keep mixing the names up, in which case, I'm sorry. I know I'm discussing Grizzly Hendrix, but just in case something slips through editing, uh, I just wanted to apologize for that in advance. So let's get into it. Uh, why am I making this video? Actually, it's Grizzly Hendrix's fault. So I was watching the video that was titled Royce 59 Threatening Me in Scam. Company reaches out to me and he says, whatever. So the company reaches out to him and at the end of it, he kind of says, let me know if you think he's wrong. In fact, across most of the early videos in uh, Grizzly Hendrix's campaign, he specifically said, let me know in the comments if I'm tripping, if you think I'm wrong, all this other stuff. Like it was like, he said it in like six videos. So if you were to look at me, I feel Grizzly Hendrix wants my opinion whether or not I agree with him. I mean, why else is he asking? I can't figure it out. Uh, so he did that and I thought it was fascinating because one of the first videos I watched is actually the video from, and so that first video I pointed out September 29th uh, is when it released and on October 5th in the video titled STAN 2020 UPDATE three exclamation marks in parentheses, all caps, no, I don't want to be in the industry. He then proceeds to make fun of people who aren't agreeing with him and calling people corny in their comments and kind of dissing them. I'm a little confused, just personally. How are you gonna go and spend like five videos? I literally just spilled some coffee on myself. I literally spilled coffee. Anyway, how are you gonna go and spend five videos asking people what they think and then diss them? Uh, so I looked up the word scam right? Because I was curious. Let's look at the definition. We always should. A dishonest scheme of fraud or a swindle. A scammer would be a person who participates in these activities. I'm going to argue that the way Greasy treated people with regards to baiting them into comments only to diss them publicly, a little scammy, but that's just me making a joke. I don't really consider that scammy. I just thought it was funny and a little hypocritical on his end. But I actually think that Greasy is coming into this from a very interesting point of view. So let's address what happened. At some point in the past, Greasy Hendrix is robbed $1,800 according to him via uh, DJ Khaled's people. So he's name dropping at that point, letting you know who it is. Fair enough. The names all coming from uh, Mr. Hendrix's video. So if it's not true, it's just allegedly, right? You're supposed to say allegedly in these videos. Um, then basically, it seems the gist of it is at some point in the past, Grizzy hits up Rice, asks for some features. Rice is like, I'll get back to you one day. Don't worry about it. He doesn't do it. 
Grizzly moves on, makes a track. Grizzly hits up Royce another time, proceeds to go ahead and, uh, you know, ask for another feature. Royce is like, I'm going to get to it one day. Uh, don't worry about the fee. Da, da, da. I think you're dope. Just wait on time. Time is the big issue. And then uh, proceeds to, like, move on and psh, never really follows up. I don't know. At some point or another, then, Royce uh, basically hits him up for promo. He you see... Mr. Uh, Grizzy did release some screenshots, so what I kind of got caught on to, and this is from a video, this is at the end of his music video on October 10th, so this is the 11th I'm recording this, it's fresh. But uh, at the end of it, you see uh, behind the scenes in the DMs from a verified Royce to 59 account where it says, what's up fam? I could do hosting for 1K, that's $1,000. Basically, it's me recording myself talking my shit for you, letting my fans know I'm rocking with you, calling you in your city, you can use that shit wherever you want, etc. Or for $600, I could put you on my new mixtape, etc. And then um, he just kind of goes, I'm down with that for sure. Can we do that? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, the message is a little longer. Go check his video if you want the whole thing. I'm putting none of his content in this video, so I cannot be copyright struck because let's say Grizzy Hendrix happens to be a petty dude and doesn't like my video. If I use any of his content, he can shut it down. This way, it kind of protects me a little bit. So sorry for the lack of visual accompaniment that you might expect in one of these teardowns. I'm not prepared to fight like that. He's like, you know, Grizzy's like, I'm going to help lock that down and then royce is like i'm down let's lock in the payment first and then we book it send it split up payments da 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 da, da 400 this way 400 that way uh cash shop blah 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 and etc you know send it all to it so it's all like whatever it, it does look like royce gives no shits about uh, grizzy hendrix to me reading this it looks like royce is doing kind of what i think to be a standard practices and understand stuff we'll get to that um anyway so then he's like i got you i got you i gotta put some cash and then I'll get back to you. This is Grizzy with Royce responding with, I'm down to talk business and helping you in any kind of way, whatever. But let me start off with uh, the five to hundred, see how it goes. And then uh, I guess it just escalated into uh, some stuff happening. Along the way in the videos, we find out that Dave East spent some money. And honestly, Dave East, if you want me to clip this part out, I'm happy to do that for you. But apparently Dave East uh, spent some money on Royce to five nine. And, you know, like, basically didn't get the value that was promised to it. And um, a lot of another unnamed artist felt the same way. And so Grizzy's out here for the people. And that, part of why I kind of brought up, like, I don't know, I feel like I should just add in Grizzy's like, what are you doing for people? I'm interviewing people in my city, dude. I'm not as popping as you with your 56.5k subs but uh, i'm actually trying to do some stuff to put up montreal's anglo hip-hop scene on the map behind the scene and not charging artists so i might be one of the few people based on your criteria that gets to make a video on this because i don't know i actually i'm not the scammy artist type however i just wanted to talk about the concept of whether or not this is a scam um, across the board, do I think from what I've seen in Grizzly's videos that Royce and others are overcharging for promotion that has almost no ROI, as in return on investment? Absolutely. This is like you're paying for fluff. Uh, that's the truth of it. Is it a scam? Maybe. Maybe it's a scam? I don't know how to answer that question. It. I mean, look, in a moment where we can prove that let's say Royce was supposed to do five posts and three videos and very specific intangible things that were agreed upon for X dollars. If those things were met, then it's not a scam. If there's no return on investment, that's a bad investment. Sure, we can agree that it, the value Royce is providing might not be there. I personally wouldn't spend $1,000 to get Royce to do a video. People are throwing that shit away on Cameo for a lot cheaper. So you can totally work around that if you're looking for fake celebrity endorsement. But all I'm saying is based on the screenshots provided in this video as receipts, I was led to believe that while Royce might have no integrity, apparently, he's a bit of a whore. I actually might respect Royce to 5'9's business practices a little less because the man's brand is i don't know i guess i just expected more of pay me money for promotion but it turns out a lot of these big names are doing this stuff but then i started to think about what it's like to be royce to five nine right like 
all day long, you're getting dudes hitting you up for promotion. It's not like at any point in Crazy Hendrix's story, we hear the part where Royce sought him out and said, I want to do a feature. Everything was like, Crazy hit up Royce. And then Royce answered and then followed up accordingly based on how whatever. And then Grizzy felt away after it didn't go how he wanted. Now, here's the thing, man. Grizzy made some points like, yo, it, common courtesy is to respond to a person after you say you like something. I mean, I have 2,300 subscribers and I have trouble following up on the people who ask me for stuff that I might say yes to and then I forget about it because time, time is a big thing where it's hard to do everything. So I'm not really certain that hearing all of the evidence that Grizzy Hendrix has supplied that Royce to 5 9 is a scammer. Do I think that maybe Royce to 5 9 doesn't give a shit about local rappers that are trying to, you know, get a come up on his name? I would say that. Royce saw an opportunity to make a buck and went for it. But, like, he kind of makes claims like, Royce to 5 9 Spotify mixtape gets no spins. And I'm like, hold up. If my track is on a Royce to 5 9 Spotify mixtape, I can go convince ignorant people that I'm cooler than I am. And that's a pretty good value, actually. That $600 to be on a fucking mixtape that has Royce's face on the cover? I don't need Royce to get me spins. I would use that to go get clout in my city. To me, there's value there. Your idea that Royce is going to generate value based off of it or spins was just your assumptions in a lot of cases. So, like, I kind of wanted to bring this up because value is a lot of perception. Maybe to many artists like, I guess, Grizzy Hendrix and others, these kind of prices are astronomically proportion like ridiculous. And I happen to agree. I think they're pretty ridiculous pricing that I would not pay for. I also don't have that kind of budget. But what if my budget was 100K, okay? What about all the labels, all the people with actual funds that to them throwing 20K at like, advertising is candy or the people with rich backers and stuff like this is true for broke indie artists but what i've come to realize is that there are just so many artists like we're talking montreal quebec canada i would easily say there are five maybe even ten thousand rappers five thousand rappers safely across the english and the french spread it to quebec i'm safe to say like we probably have to, i'm talking everything from guy on soundcloud with three songs to dudes who actually live off their career and ladies because there's a lot of ladies that are popping now um but my point is when you have like five thousand rappers in one city and then you have every city producing X amount of rappers. There are probably like a million rappers across like North America and the world. And a million rappers, how many of them all hit up Royce? And I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe, maybe it's not, but I mean, I get quite a few people who hit me up at behindthatsuit at gmail.com to be like, hey, can you review my album? And I got nothing, dude. If you look at my numbers prior to maybe this video goes viral, but it probably won't. But I don't have a whole lot of numbers, okay? And yet I still get enough requests that it's like hard to stay on top of my stuff to a point where it's like, yo, I'm happy to do things on my time. If you want it on your time, that costs money. That is my current policy with a lot of things when it comes down to dealing with local artists. But I don't charge artists for the service. I charge artists if they want to control my timeline. Now, does that make me kind of shady? Probably not, in my opinion. I think it's just fair. The other side to this is this is a lot of weird Instagram shit. Like, I mean, you hit up Royce. He says, send me money. I'll do some shit like this. I'm not seeing contracts in play. I'm not seeing, okay send the contract agreement to my email address there's just some trust that royce to five nine is got your back like it's not so much that royce to five nine is scamming people so much as that he knows that a lot of rappers and a lot of people have unrealistic expectations and to them his instagram post is worth that much money if it's not worth that much money to you don't pay it if you can't afford it don't pay it it's not a scam if he delivers on the goods. The value proposition, is it worth it? Those are separate questions because I don't see what's deceitful here in terms of it unless you basically paid Royce to do something and Royce didn't do it. Now that's a scam. 
So I don't know that I saw that happening. I saw maybe in some situation somebody put up $1,000 and Royce didn't follow up on time. I don't know the details of that one. I didn't see the communications. I can't comment on it. But from the available information and the receipts provided, what I'm seeing is a common and nefarious practice, in my opinion, in the industry. But that's my opinion. On the other hand, on a micro scale, this exists. I'm talking dudes with fan bases not much, maybe larger than like, I don't know. I don't want to say names. So the rest of this is not going to have names. But let's say I, on a personal level, know Artist A. And Artist A has some clout, he's working with some names, and therefore he's able to do a couple of things regardless of numbers. He's putting together some mixtapes. To be on that mixtape, it costs this much money. It's just the facts of the situation. It costs this much money to be on the mixtape. Does the mixtape guarantee you views? No. You can say usually it gets this, sure. But does it guarantee anything? No. It's just... If you pay that money, you get your placement there. But then you get your placement on that guy's name. Whether or not he promotes it, shares it, whatever. The fact is, it's up to you to take that placement and do something with it and to have the marketing plan to support it and to all this other stuff. And listen, if you're going to work with a guy like Royce to 59 you're paying like $5,000 for him to prioritize you. You're not paying $5,000 because of the value of the situation. Why would he stop everything he's doing? How do you know what he's got in the pipeline? How do you know that what you're doing is actually of value to his time? If you guys don't specify a whole bunch of stuff, plus I saw one of the things, it was like for this much money, the crazier high numbers, you get like a month of promotion, this, that, the next thing. That's on you to have the follow-up plan to make that return on investment come into place. Look, all I'm saying is, should this be the way the industry is? Probably not. But has it ever not been like this? No, this is history. You go all the way back to classical music, it's still just rich dudes playing games with artists. That's the history of it. Yo, in like Icelandic times, uh, basically poets would go suck the dick of kings with their words in exchange for gifts and food. And if you fucked up, you died. At least we're not in those days. But like, all I'm trying to say is, yes, Royce to 59 and others may be involved with an agency that has offered these dudes a monetization scheme that makes sense considering how many rappers out there that suck have money but i'm just trying to put it out there like look to a lot of people a thousand dollars for a month is just different than other people who are trying to do things in other lives like with my salary it's it's ridiculous if i had fast money coming in maybe i would be able to monopolize on the momentum or something so all i'm trying to say is I don't really like that Royce the 5'9 is engaging in this kind of practice. He's not the only big main name rapper to do it. Truth is, don't trust half these features and cosigns and shares as like legit. A lot of stuff is goofy. But the other side of it is I went and looked at Royce the 5'9's profile. It just doesn't look like he's the kind of guy that's going to prioritize it. Did y'all like research the dude? Research his like social medias ahead of time? Did y'all look at the reach he gets? The amount of video spins and whatnot? Did y'all actually look into the social blades and do the follow-up homework to qualify the fucking investment? Or did you get excited because you saw Royce to 5'9 and you thought magical things was going to happen? I don't know. That's just kind of how it felt to me. This video may not be like a positive spin on things. It's just... I'm facing myself the stark reality that everything in this industry is pay to play. If I want behind that suit to pop, I just throw money at some ads or something. Or I change up my content to be like more spilling tea algorithm friendly stuff. You know, because at the end of the day, we can all sit there and whine about the industry. But I don't think I like Grizzy Hendrix having watched this. The fact that he snitched out Dave East in that video the way he did was just rude and dirty. That wasn't polite. That wasn't G. That wasn't anything. It was just... You baited out your dude like a snitch. Like you snitched out. Like now I'm going to look at Dave East when I review his album and I'm just going to be like, he paid Royce for promotion. Now that's fine. You're allowed. But to know that he kind of got scammed by Royce or whatever, like that's weird. It's just a weird thing. I don't know why I needed to know that. That was a strange bit of information to share that added no value because I couldn't find anything online to corroborate it. Maybe that happened. Let me know in the comments as always because I don't even know who's going to care about this video. It's very different than my normal style. Still, somebody asked. I want to answer the question. I hope that y'all enjoyed this. I don't really think I have a lot more to say about it. But just if you think this is, this is a weird situation, 
there's no part of this that isn't charge a rapper for nothing okay like video guys charge us for a lot of money why do, my videos my music videos are garbage because we do them myself at no dollars and like my mixing is my dude and maybe maybe i could do something a little bit better maybe but i don't think so i think at the end of the day just at the end of the day I'm working within the realms of what I can afford to produce the art at the highest quality I can achieve within the realms of my life, understanding what the return on investment or promotional strategies are. One of the main reasons I've never engaged in promotion to that scale is because until you have thousands to put up a month on repeat, it's a very hard game to compete in. Like, that's the value of these guys' posts, probably because that's how many people ask for it. If you have a hundred people asking for your story every day, what's that worth? So it's worth what people want to pay, okay? Like, that's the truth of this shit. You want to protect yourself? Add words like get a contract when dealing with these people. Watch how the scammers disappear the second you go. Let's get that e-sign on a contract up and play. Like, I don't know. I don't think Royce the Five Nine's a scammer. I do think he's involved in some slimy shit. But at the end of the day, that guy has made it clear. He is really trying to get his cheddar. That's an important thing to him. So I guess he's getting his chatter like this. I mean, it is what it is. Do I like this part of the industry? No, I think it's shady. I think it's scummy. I don't think it's very polite at all. But does that make him a scammer? That's a bull claim. Either way, I feel like Greasy Hendrix uh, accomplished it. He got me to watch all his videos. Here's the thing. I know he said, if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. I liked it. I liked not liking your opinion. What am I supposed to say? I love that shit. I love disagreeing with people. Then I can come make a video like this. I enjoy this. This was fun. I hope it made me come off corny to some people. I'm all right with that. If you're entertained by me being corny, big win. Everybody wins. Anyway, thank y'all for watching it. Like I said earlier, I got some new music out. Links in the description. Follow me on Spotify and all that if you feel it. Uh, special thanks to the patrons. This is Mel Gadansi, Chris Power, Jonathan Barnes, uh, DJ Black Hurricane, Linda Williams, Scribble, uh, then Carl. They're all dope. They support what we do. I mean, I don't know if they support this kind of video. I just dropped this random. This wasn't even planned. Uh, my girlfriend is sick, so we couldn't record, but I wanted to record today. And <sighs> gossip video for y'all. Anyway, I appreciate y'all either way. I would love to hear your opinions. Feel free to call me all the names you want in the comment. But if you're too extreme with your name calling, YouTube is the one that deleted it, not me. Anyway, live long and prosper, everyone.